May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. May 28, 2024 Tuesday of the eighth week in Ordinary Time A reading from the first letter of Peter Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you, in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord has made known his salvation. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his victory, he has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing praises. The Lord has made known his salvation. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields, for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields, with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection Jesus' statement above is in response to Peter who said to him, We have left everything and followed you. It was as if Peter were patting himself on the back, attempting to highlight just how much he and the other disciples had sacrificed to follow Jesus. And it was true, they did give up everything of their former life. They left home, their occupation, their relationships and everything that had been part of their daily established life in response to the call of Jesus. They were truly all in. In hearing this statement from Peter, Jesus does not give the expected response. He doesn't say to Peter, yes, you have, that's very impressive Peter. Good job and thank you. Instead. Jesus immediately explains to Peter that the sacrifice he and the others have made is worth it. Their unwavering commitment to follow Jesus would be repaid with gifts beyond their imagination. Thus, Jesus was saying that the gifts that he would bestow upon them would be exponentially greater than every sacrifice they made. This was not a belittling of Peter's self-sacrifice, rather, it was a form of encouragement by Jesus. He was encouraging Peter, and the other disciples, to have full confidence in their decision to follow him. Their sacrifice would yield a hundredfold return. That is truly a good investment. It can be tempting for us all, at times, 
to feel as though God asks too much of us. It's true that God asks much of us. He asks everything from us. He asks for the complete and total gift of our lives to Him. He calls us to abandon all selfishness and to dedicate ourselves to His holy will without exception. But if we understand the reward of our self-giving, then the sacrifices we make will pale in comparison to the reward. Reflect, today, upon whether or not you can say those words of the Apostle, St. Peter, Lord, I have left everything to follow you. Have you truly given your life completely to Christ Jesus? Are there things that you still hold back, not wanting to sacrifice for our Lord? Ponder those words of Peter and allow yourself to see the areas of your life you still need to surrender over to Jesus. And as you do so, allow the reward promised by our Lord to motivate you to the point that you truly hold nothing back and truly have given up everything to follow His holy will. Let us pray. My generous Lord, you ask everything of me. You ask me to abandon everything in my pursuit of your perfect will. Give me the grace I need to answer your call and to live sacrificially for you without counting the cost. You are generous beyond description, dear Lord, and I trust that following you will produce an abundance of good fruit. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.